Today we're talking about the Crusher. The Crusher is actually an item we haven't heard all too much of in Season 4. It received a major overhaul at the start of the season with completely new stats and effects. It now costs 2300 gold, has 30 physical power, 15% attack speed, 15 physical penetration, and successfully hitting an enemy guard with a basic attack will subtract one second from all your abilities currently on cooldown. This effect can only occur once every five seconds. What's important here is that this effect only procs on guards. I think this is something that some people tend to forget from time to time. It does not proc on anything but guards. In this video we will determine which characters could make use of this, how effective it is in regards to damage and what else there is to know about this item, especially in comparison to similar items. To start this off, let's look at some similar items and see how they compare in damage. For this we will use the Crusher, Brawler's Beatstick, the stats can be seen here, and Heartseeker. Brawler's Beatstick is a bit more towards the raw damage side, it does have a little more power but no attack speed. And it also has a very effective passive, which is anti-heal. Heartseeker, on the other hand, does not have as much power or penetration. It has some extra movement speed, giving you some more mobility. It also has a passive that amplifies your ability after 5 basic attacks. For the number crunching here, we will assume that the player goes into the battle with 5 stacks on Heartseeker. This is usually what you will see when you go into a fight, simply because you will have farmed some minions, some camps beforehand, so you will have those stacks and you can proc them on the first guard that you fight. Likewise, only one Heartseeker proc is assumed, the 3 will not have a Heartseeker proc factor in just the 1. And the guard we're talking about in this scenario is Thor. We will go through the damage for basic attacks, the one with additional Heartseeker proc if applicable, and the three. The build is Boots, like Warrior Tabi, John's Wrath and whichever of the three items. And this is tested against a level 12 Ra bot as Thor level 12. When comparing the Crusher and Brawler Speedstick here, there are very little surprises. Brawler Speedstick simply has a little more power, otherwise the stats are the same in regards to damage per basic attack and damage per ability. So Brawler's Beatstick comes out with 1512 damage, whereas the Crusher comes out with 1475 damage. These values are extremely close to each other and will hardly ever make a difference, though it is worth mentioning that both items have different extra effects. We get into that more later. Heartseeker, on the other hand, actually ends up between the two with 1490 damage. While Heartseeker has weaker damage on every ability and every basic due to lower power and lower pen, it makes up for it with that extra proc, that effect really helps it staying relevant between the two. But the base values are not all that we have to factor in here. First of all, the Crusher has attack speed. Therefore, it will most likely come out on top whenever you do a raw DPS calculation. Now, doing a raw DPS calculation is not very helpful for assassins, because most assassins get a decent chunk of their damage from their abilities and then add to it with basic attacks. For example, in the regards to Willish, this is a 50-50 ratio. She's like the most hybrid it could get, really. In addition, you also have the cooldown reducing passive, which can help on guards that already have relatively low cooldowns especially. For example, a Willis Feather Step has a 4.8 seconds cooldown. Reducing that by 1 second brings it down to 3.8 seconds, which is really not long at all. We will address the cooldown reduction a little more later on. Let's first look at Brawler's Beatstick here, because Brawler's Beatstick damage-wise is only slightly better and DPS-wise is definitely worse. What it does have going for itself though is anti-heal. And the problem is, while the stats may not be as great, Brawler's Beatstick is not only cheaper, but anti-heal is just so good at the moment. You will very frequently see Hunters going into Lifesteal, you will very frequently see Hercules or Tyr in the solo lane, and you will often see other healers on top of that, even Chang'e is coming back. So therefore, anti-heal is just such a valuable stat, and if you can get it in combination with other good stats for your character, there is hardly any reason not to build it, and the little bit of extra DPS that you would get out of other items will be far outweighed by the anti-heal, or rather the extra HP that the enemy won't have because they didn't heal up as much. 
So while Brawlers only has a little more ability damage and doesn't really look like a favorable item just from the damage stats, it is just very very useful at the moment and there are hardly any scenarios where you will not make any use of the passive. And that just pushes it much much further than Crusher in most situations. Heartseeker on the other hand does not compete quite as well when it comes to the damage segment but makes up for it with that movement speed. Movement speed is really, really important. It not only helps you juking, it helps you sticking to an enemy. So while the Crusher has that extra attack speed to help you stick to an enemy by having a shorter movement penalty for basic attacks, it doesn't really matter because in the end you're still gonna be faster with Heartseeker and it also gives you rotational speed outside of that, meaning you will always be in a place faster than somebody else who doesn't build it. This is especially important for junglers. The passive effect of Heartseeker also works really well in combination with other penetration items that you build beforehand and then going into Heartseeker or the other way around, so really it's very synergistic. The same can't always be said for the Crusher. Actually, it's hardly synergistic unless you have 40% CDR already. That is actually the place where the Crusher becomes really, really effective. And that's something you have to reach first. If you put it in direct comparison to Jolton's Wrath, which I couldn't for the fact that I already built Jolton's Wrath beforehand in this particular example, then you would end up with roughly the same damage, Jolton's Wrath having a little more power and a little less penetration. Slightly higher price tag for Jolton's Wrath here, you get some extra mana in return, so it kind of evens out, but Jolton's Wrath just has 20% CDR right off the bat. And why this is so much better is because the CDR applies outside of fighting, outside of hitting enemies, outside of hitting guards especially. And this is very important. Think about for example Thor. Thor gets cool and reaction relatively early to use his ultimate more to make faster rotations and to aggress on enemies with the ultimate when he can. If you build the Crusher, that's not possible. You need to hit the enemy first to actually get the cooldown reduction. So you won't be able to get any cooldown reduction beforehand. And afterwards, it's not all that necessary. Also, for the ultimate, especially uh, one second does relatively little. It's better for short cooldown abilities. So this kind of takes away from the fact that many junglers, many assassins have strong teamfight ultimates or engage ultimates that they want the CDR for. And that's why I think you always have to get other CD items first. You have to get those CD items that really facilitate it, like Jolton's Wrath or Hydra's Lament, before you can consider going into Crusher, maybe as a supplement when you're already on full CDR. There is some stupid fun stuff that you can do with the Crusher. For example, if you build into Warrior Tabi, Jolton's Wrath, Spirit Rope, Titan's Bane, Genji's Guard and the Crusher, you will have a ridiculous amount of cooldown reduction in addition to multiple effects that take away a cooldown from abilities and as such you can spam your abilities much more. But in my opinion an item that facilitates cooldown reduction and really makes a use of that should have some base cooldown reduction to start with. I would prefer if this item had no attack speed and actually cooldown reduction instead, because at the moment it doesn't really make too much sense in itself for most characters. And that's what brings us to the characters who can make use of this item or can't. The first one, I mentioned it already multiple times throughout this video, a Willish. A Willish can, out of all gods, I would say, still make the most use out of this item, though that doesn't necessarily mean that it's all that good on her. I would still prefer many other items, like Hydra's Lament, like Jolton's Wrath, like even Heartseeker, on her before I would even consider building the Crusher, due to the reasons mentioned before. There are some gods that can make somewhat of a niche use of it, I would say, Fenrir, Nemesis, Loki and Ratosker, maybe even Thor, simply because they all use their basic attacks in a fight from time to time. They can make decent use of CDR, but they all have some sort of downsides tied to it. Like for example on Fenrir you would rather have just full on CDR and then go into some defense usually. Nemesis doesn't really benefit too much from the power on the item, while the rest of the stats are kinda good-ish. Loki does well okay with it, but at that point he should have other CDR items first and then he should probably look for some pure burst where Brawlers is a lot better. And then Redder Tosker, you know, can just build everything a little bit, so it's okay for him. But there's no god where I would say, hey, you should absolutely build this item on this god. There are also a lot of gods where I would say do not build this item. Arachne, Bakasura and Kali, all those gods who have actually attack speed in their kit, 
really don't make much use of extra cooldown reduction. They do make use of it, obviously, but it's not important for them. It's not a core essential mechanic of their kit, so really it should be avoided, because usually there are better options with more damage or more attack speed or something like that. Especially Sir Cat, I think, should not use this item because there are much better CDR options for her, much better damage options, and she doesn't use basic attacks in between her abilities, so you have to wait after your whole ability chain, and that's kind of very not what this item is about. Additionally, I'd like to point out that I would just prefer Heartseeker on all these guards. Heartseeker just does so much more for basic attacking guards because you get the 5 stacks and you get the effect again. Whereas with a Crusher, you can get the effect every 5 seconds, but after 5 seconds, you will probably almost have that ability off cooldown, so usually you just get one proc per ability rotation. Maybe two if you're lucky and you stick to an enemy for five seconds, but that's already very, very conditional. And that makes it very problematic, in my opinion. Gods that I believe could make more use of this are ability-focused hunters like Ulur or Medusa. The problem here is that there is not much room to fit it in the build. You definitely don't want to build it early because early you always have better choices. So it's going to be a very late game last slot situational item. And in that slot there are a lot of items you can build and many will give you a lot more DPS. For example something like Odysseus Bow would if you go for an ability pen focused build. And the crusher effect is nice but it usually doesn't change all too much for them. They do make better use of it because they benefit more from raw DPS, but then again, especially hunters trade, and when they trade, they will look to have an advantage over the opposition, and that will often come through the anti-heal from brawlers if you build into a pen-focused build. So that might outclass Crasher once again there, so you see how the applications are very limited. You can't just replace a Kyval with this either, because a Kyval is just a much better boxing focused item with the power steal from it, and as such that kind of falls flat as well, or somewhat flat at least. I don't think the Crusher is never gonna get picked up again, I think it is a very niche item for very specific conditions where you could possibly make use of the item. but. That already says a lot about it. It's just very, very hard to find that niche, especially because it ties too many stats into one item that are nice in the fact that they are a lot of stats, but don't necessarily synergize all that well. With that, I hope I gave you a decent overview of why we're not seeing too much of the Crusher. Thank you guys for watching. I hope to see you for the next video tomorrow. I'll also be doing a birthday stream tomorrow, so feel free to stop by there. The link is at the end of the video. If you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe or watch the video linked at the end. Dukesloth, out.